All right, so today our job is to set up this porch here and there's this front pavilion that I've been talking about. You kind of see right here the uh, gable line and that's actually gonna come straight out of the building and then it's gonna wrap around this corner. So me and Greg and Zach just got all of our points marked out. Really all we've done is just pulled simple tape measures to determine all the points on the ground for our columns. We're not looking for perfection, we're looking for like super close, which if you double check a bunch of different square measurements, you'll make sure everything's right. But once we pour our concrete pier, then we will uh, get super precise and mark exactly where our columns are gonna go. So we just went ahead and uh, dropped some nails in the ground. And now we're gonna go ahead and get a uh, hole dug. I'm a little anxious because this is sand. And uh, if you've ever dug in sand, the hole could keep caving in, but we're gonna find that out pretty quickly. All right, well, the time has come. We've got these holes to dig and you know, if this JCB is gonna earn a spot on the job site, it definitely has to dig holes well because we, we dig a lot of holes and that's gotta be efficient, quick, and it's gotta be done well. So I'm, I'm a little anxious, enough talking. Let's see how this works. Now the thing that I noticed right away is that visibility down low is not as good as the Kubota. I gotta lean forward to see exactly where my hole is and as I'm going down, it gets a little bit less easy to see. Um, you know, this is not a great demo for hydraulic power or digging power because this sand, I mean, I could probably dig it with like a cordless hand crank or something, it's so loose. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep digging holes and maybe get a good feel after digging all these how it does. Also, you see in about that last foot, we got into some nice virgin ground because remember all this sand was filled in and I wanted to make sure our piers are sitting down in some nice solid ground, not just up in this loose fill sand. I gotta be honest, that was uh, beyond, I was beyond surprised. I thought it was more smooth 
than I would have anticipated based on the electronic hydraulic controls with just operating it normally. It dug some very straight holes without any real backing up or pulling forward. I honestly, I thought this was gonna be a negative for the uh, JCB, but it turned out to be pretty good. So we'll take a second here just to kind of explain what we did. We're putting this porch that's gonna gable out of our building end here. And then what we've got is we've got this wrap around section that's eight foot deep and it's gonna wrap around this corner and there's gonna be a hip here. Now what that means is we've got all these different points that we had to plot out. And you might be asking yourself, yeah, but like, how do you do that efficiently? How do you make sure it's perfect? And I'll share with you exactly what we did. So in my opinion, you always wanna break down whatever you're trying to do to the simplest of forms. And basically all this is, this wraparound hip porch with different dimensions is really just a bunch of squares. Now, if you know math, uh, you know that you can do a quick calculation. And if you know your rise, your run, you can get your diagonal to check all of your square um, dimensions to make sure things are perfect. So what we did was we had this 16 foot deep, 24 foot wide porch that comes right out of the middle of this building. So we plotted our, our measurements off the corners right where we knew it was gonna be. And all we did was we pulled a simple 16 foot measurement out to the corner and a diagonal measurement, which I did math on this calculator I use. But regardless, once you determine that corner, you do the same thing to get this corner, which is just by pulling your 16 dimension and your diagonal dimension, which I think was 28, 10 and an eighth, I do believe. Um, and then what we do is once we have those two corners marked, we'll always pull another tape measure to confirm that it's 24 feet. Now, if that is close and that's, I mean, it should be exact because math never lies, um, then that's where this square is gonna start. Now, it gets a little bit tricky, uh, maybe if you've never done this before, but now that we're gonna be wrapping this eight foot, eight foot deep porch around, well, you can make it pretty simple by making a nice line from your wall out to this corner. Now, it does not have to be perfect at this point. You could set up some batter boards, you could get string lines, but for, for the purpose of what we're doing is we want a nice pier, and then we will actually make sure that we plot the points on top of those piers exactly when we go to actually set our brackets and install our columns. So this, this we just made a nice eight foot dimension off the wall in line with this uh, edge of the building and pulled a 20 foot dimension back to that corner and came off of this guy, which is the edge of this line with a diagonal. So once again, we're making another square. It's actually a rectangle, but you get my point to, to basically pull off and get a square point right here using this dimension of 20 foot. And then this dimension here, which I, I don't remember that dimension off the top of my head. Now, once this point was made, we're able to come over here, measure off our building, and eight foot, draw a line to this to double check. Now, it can get crazy, and if you really wanna be precise, which we always try to do as much as we can to be as precise as possible, uh, we then went all the way back over to that corner, which, um, if everything is perfect, we pulled a tape measure diagonal, 40 foot run, all the way back to this point, and put a diagonal on it to confirm that this corner here was square and perpendicular to that corner all the way back over there. Now, if you, if you keep pulling triangles, you can confirm that everything is perfect. But the most important thing is that none of this will work if the building or whatever you're pulling off of is not straight or square. So you guys remember back in that first episode, we used that Stabila layout station to make sure that everything, all these corners, the secondary building in the back there, the garage, was all perpendicular and square to each other. And if you don't do that, then none of this stuff will work as well. So hopefully that helps somebody. Um, the main takeaway is make simple squares, use math to determine them to be square, and just kind of build off of it from there. All right, now it's time to determine the height of our sauna tube for our piers. And we're going to have a one inch slope per eight foot on this pad. So right here, I know this grade based off of this dirt line is 34 and a half inches from grade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where 
my laser's beeping off of the foundation. Now that is great. So anywhere I put this stick and I get the laser beep, that's zero on our grade. But what we want to do is we want our pier four inches below top of finished floor out here. Uh, and that's so that the floor can be poured and capped right over top of our concrete pier. We don't want to have to pour the concrete around that pier. So what I'm going to do is like on this hole here, I'm eight foot away from the building. I'm actually going to use the grade stick because I have it set at zero right now. All I have to do is I have to go to minus my four inches for the pad and then add another inch for slope. So I'm going to go minus five inches. And wherever this tones out, that's where the top of my pier is going to be. So very easily I can ensure that all of my piers that are eight foot away from the building are going to be at that one inch slope. And when I get out here to my 16 foot piers that are 16 foot away from the building, I'm going to add another inch of slope. So if you don't know how to use a grade stick, um, I did do a video that, if I remember, I'll tag in uh, up here somewhere in the corner. Go to learn a little bit about a grade stick and how it can make your job a lot easier. Once you have grade designated, all you got to do is slide this thing up and down and it's uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sixteenth, brother. Eighth, sixteenth. Yep. Back up a little. Up a sixteenth. What if you just leveled out your stick? Yeah. I'm just flush with this guy over here. Let's get right here. Okay, keep going, keep going. Three quarters, five eighths, half, six. Whoa, sixteenth. Take to the side. Three sixteenths up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a uh, it's Fourth of July, my dude. Shoot, now now everybody on YouTube knows hey, how far back I am. Thursday night. We're yeah. gonna go into the beer garden. Huh? Thursday night. Thursday night. That's when the two white crew is also supposed to be in town. So if you guys want to, Thursday night, Fourth <laughs> of July, we're gonna be downtown Dixon, and we're gonna get sloshy. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. This, this side was a lot easier because we didn't have a bunch of different outside corners like the, uh, the north side of the building where we had the 24-foot pavilion that came back into an 8-foot wraparound porch. This is pretty easy. It's just going to be a 30-foot uh, gabled out roof and it's going to come all the way back and part of that wall uh, on this, this side here of the building is going to have 8-foot of that roof line so it's actually quite easy. Yeah, seriously, digging with that JCB is quite fun. And uh, I feel like the further I boom out, even though my movements are amplified because I'm further away from, I guess, the pivot point, it's, it's, uh, it's actually easier to go up and down. Because I'm further away, uh, the amount of, I guess, angle of change from up to down or high to low, whatever you want to say, is a lot less. So it's, it's pretty cool, actually. I do enjoy that. I guess the goal here is we hopefully, uh, hopefully these mats will definitely take away any of the movement of the sand when the concrete truck drives over because I don't want to use the skid loader and the bucket unless we absolutely have to. So the goal is we'll fill up these front holes just to make them solid so when he drives on the sand there's nowhere for it to go and hopefully these mats hold them up, float them right over top and then we'll get the uh, holes in the back. I think it'll be fine. 
All right, today was all about getting our porch piers poured. Don't try saying that too many times fast. Uh, and we got that done. It actually ended up going quite well. I was a little bit worried about the sand collapsing while we dug the holes. Uh, the JCB performed better than expected. And we were able to get the concrete truck in and not have to pour into the bucket and transport the concrete. It actually worked out all in all very well. So I'm very pumped. We're now able to start building on the uh, on those pads after a couple days and I think our cedar should be in in a couple days which is what we'll be building the piers or the sorry we'll be building the post and beam with um, so I'm really excited I think that that is what's going to really set off this project is when we start building all those porches uh, I always say if you're gonna build a post frame and you don't want to look look at it like just a big commercial building or a farm building or whatever throw a porch on it put a wrap around make it even better and that really sets it apart so we're going to get out of here it's a nice day it's a long day and i'm ready to go home 